Write five simple sentences in simple words which will be the intro to my YouTube video about the fact that the AI is all around us AI generated images, kids using AI to do their homework. Can I use AI for something I do? Can AI help me write Arduino programs or maybe it can outright replace me? Do not number sentences. Welcome to my YouTube video. Today we are going to explore the fascinating world of AI and how it's becoming increasingly integrated into our daily lives. From AI generated images to kids using AI to tackle their homework. This technology is all around us. But have you ever wondered if you personally can benefit from using AI? Can it assist you in writing Arduino code or replace you entirely? Let's dive in and find out together. So how did you like my ChatGPT generated intro? It was not too bad, right? In this video, we are putting Arduino GPT to the test. We will ask it to write few Arduino programs. We will start with a very simple sketch and then move to the more complex ones. We will not only check if the code works, but in one particular case we will compare it with my own code. Should be interesting. We will start with a simple code to control few LEDs. For the purpose of this challenge, I built this simple circuit where you have 5 LEDs connected to digital pins from 2 to 5. I will ask ChatGPT to write a LED chaser program. To make it slightly more difficult, we will request the interval in between each state to gradually change from 10 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds and gradually to shrink back to 10 milliseconds. Ok, I'm ready. I'm hitting enter and the magic begins. This is freaking insane, right? This code looks legitimate. And also ChatGPT generates short documentation. You can hit regenerate code and believe me, the code and the documentation would be slightly or sometimes entirely different each time you do it. Let's paste the code to Arduino IDE and have a look at it. We have LED pins nicely declared and set as output and in loop function we have a simple for loop which goes through all LEDs litting each one for the interval duration and then turning it off and moving to the next one. Then you have a code section that's increasing or decreasing interval as per my request. Let's power Arduino and compile the code. So far so good. Loading it to the board and... LED chase program works fine and you can clearly see Interval changes. I am impressed. So the first challenge is completed successfully. The program was generated and I did not have to change a single thing. Moving to the next challenge. This time we will see if ChatGPT is aware of specialized libraries we may need in some programs. So in this case we want to use OLED display. I'm going to request ChatGPT to draw a large circle in the center of the screen and inside that circle I would like ChatGPT to count from 0 to 9 using size to font. Generating started. Nice! AI declared the right libraries and set the right display dimensions. Code is ready and you also see a short documentation. Let's move it to Arduino IDE and load it to microcontroller. It works, but the circle is not in the center. Let's complain to AI about it and ask it for a fix. As always AI is very apologetic and regenerates a code for us. Let's try it. It fixed the circle issue but changed the digit placement, which I did not ask for. Let's be persistent and ask AI to get the code right. And... Now it looks better 
Not perfect, but it shows you can actually have a dialogue with AI to perfect the code and fix potential issues. In the next challenge we also would use OLED display. When I was at the university we used to write Pascal code to generate fractal images. I think it's a perfect idea for challenging task for AI. I will ask ChatGPT to generate visually stunning fractal image on a tiny OLED display. Ready, set, go. That looks like a complex piece of code. Oh, look, we are there for a treat. It is actually Mandelbrot set fractal, one of the most stunning ones. You actually can see it in the intro to that challenge. It will not be as colorful and pretty on this tiny display, but let's have a look. Wonderful. I had fun with ChatGPT and regenerated this request dozens of times. Majority sketches I got were no good. They showed either nothing or complete gibberish. But I got few amazing ones. Here is the different representation of Mandelbrot set. This one is beautiful and I identified it as Koch curve fractal. I have no clue what that one is. This one I think is Julia set fractal. But then I also got some messy ones, like this, or even this one, which is not visually stunning at all. Time for the last challenge. I'll ask ChatGPT to count from 0 to 9 on a 7 segment display connected to shift register. I have wrote such program before, so I will be able to compare results. Generating started. Looking good. Finished. I copied the code, but before I run it, let's compare it with the sketch I wrote in one of my last videos. Let's look first at declarations and setup function. Here is Mario's ideas code, and here is the one generated by ChatGPT. First you see the section to declare shift register pins. No real differences here. AI version has comments, which is nice, as it helps others to understand your code. I sometimes get too lazy to do that. Next you have a section where you define bit sequences for each digit. AI version is much more optimal from memory consumption standpoint. In my defense, objective of my code was not to optimize memory. But still, my table occupies 8 times more memory than chat GPT one. In setup, we set all shift register pins as output and those sections are pretty much the same. Moving on to loop and to custom function, which exists in both codes, used to display individual digits. Here is my code and here is the one from ChatGPT. Loop function is virtually identical, but you do see some differences in custom function. It is cool that AI chose nearly the same name for it. There is a difference in the way I push the bits into the register. I do it by sending in turn high or low signals to clock pin, feeding the bit sequence one bit at a time in between the changes. Actually, I feed inverted values as the display I am using is common anode, so zero lits a segment and one turns it off. AI is using shift out method which does the same thing, it takes the bit sequence for a digit and in this case it loads it to shift register starting with most significant bit first. The latch pin actions are pretty much the same in both programs. So all in all AI code looks more tidy and it is definitely more optimal. On paper. Let's load it to Arduino and see if it actually works. And it does not. There is some data reaching the display, so that means the data pin is ok. We do not see changes in 1 second intervals, so I suspect clock and latch pins are incorrectly declared. Let's swap them around. Ok, we see some improvement, but still digits are not displayed properly. It is tricky to troubleshoot something like this. I will pick one digit and comment out the counting routine in the main loop and display just this one selected digit.
For one, we should see just two segments lit, and that is not the case. Six lit segments indicate that AI code is for common cathode display. We can fix it by inverting all the bits sent to shift out method. Reloading the code. Again, we see some improvement, but the one is still incorrectly displayed. I suspect the bits were pushed to the shift register in reverse order. We can easily change that by changing the bit order in shift out method to least significant bit first. Let's reload. <laughs> Getting closer, but still no joy. I notice in the AI table that the last bit is always the same, zero. So it would most likely represent the decimal point. But in my circuit setup, decimal point should be first, not last. Let's update the AI table and see if this fixes the issue. And it does. Let's uncomment counting routine in loop function and see if we can count from 0 to 9. How about that? So AI came up with a working code. I had issues, but keep in mind that AI didn't know the exact wiring of my setup. If the code was generated first and then, based on it, the circuit was built, I wouldn't have those issues. You probably wonder why I did not have a dialogue with AI like I had in OLED display case. Unfortunately, I did, but with multiple suggestions I was not able to help ChatGPT to fix all problems. The decimal point one seemed like the hurdle it couldn't jump over. We completed four challenges and they all finished with success. But it doesn't necessarily have to always be that way. Let me give you a non-Arduino example. Some time ago I asked ChatGPT to update me on a cast of one of my favorite Polish movies from the 80s. It provided the correct list of actors that played in that movie, but it got the casting wrong. It assigned actors to the wrong roles and also it included one fairly popular Polish actor who was not in that movie and it also provided information that that actor passed away in 2017 and he is still alive. So that didn't go down well. So I'm sure that if I ask ChatGPT to write a complex Arduino program, it might potentially provide faulty results. So who knows, maybe in the fractal challenge, certain sketches that didn't work, they didn't work because they were too complex and they couldn't fit into the OLED display, maybe it was a bogus code to start with. The problem with ChatGPT is that very rarely it answers, I don't know, I don't have enough information. Most of the times it has some information, if that information is not sufficient, it mashes it up with some other information which might not be true and provides unreliable information. Sometimes you may ask artificial intelligence for something and you get this, which is exactly what you ask for. But other times you get confusing, overcomplicated and sometimes even downright scary respond like this. And you never know. So is AI going to replace us? I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And on this positive note, I'm finishing this video. Thank you to all my patrons, especially the new one. As always, like and share my videos, subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber and I will hopefully see you in my next video. Ciao!